Okay, members, the first item of business are apologies. We have an apology from Jerry Kelly. Any others? Okay. Uh, <coughs> item two, declaration of members' interest. Uh, remind members that they are obliged to declare any relevant financial or other interest before uh, and during each committee meeting. Any member, any interest to declare? Okay. Item number three, the draft minutes of the meeting held on the 11th of November 2020. And members could refer to pages six and seven of uh, the pack and our members uh, content with the minutes. Approved? Agreed. If they're approved, then I will sign as a record. Thank you. Okay, the next item of business uh, is the matters arising and under 4.1 uh, decisions made under the temporary standing order 115 and at pages 8 and 10 of the members pack outlines the decision under the temporary standing order 1159 since the committee last met and this is for members to note in the paper that the decision will now be formally recorded in the minutes of the proceedings from today's meeting. And just to note, 4.2, the follow-up research and institutional review committees. Uh, at the last meeting on the 11th of November, the committee received a briefing from the Assembly of Research and Information Service on institutional review committees and subsequently sought additional information. The follow-up briefing uh, note is included at pages 14 to 17 of the members' packs for today, and that is for noting. Now, Ray McCaffrey from the Assembly Research is available if there is any member has any particular question. Uh, however, I think it doesn't. Uh, it, it just gives us more information. It probably doesn't add more to uh, what uh, gives us any more particular relevance to uh, what we were uh, wanting to have. So, are we happy to note? Great. Okay. Thank you, members, and uh, Ray will be pleased that uh, have to answer any questions. Uh, but can we thank him just on behalf of the committee for the work? Because these papers just don't appear; they do require a lot of work, and, and uh, we do appreciate that. Members, can I get your agreement that we move now into closed session for the next item of business, which is a review of the statement of entitlements for an official opposition and, and the procurement process? So agreed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Twenty-nine. Okay, members. Uh, item six: potential topics for the ERC forward work program, and that is at pages fifty-four to seventy-three. And Shane will just give us a, a few comments on this. Ever mindful of. Uh, some members have another another committee, and you may make reference to the correspondence that just came in. Yes. Today. Okay, Chair. The uh, at the meeting on the 11th of November, the committee had uh, considered six re responses from six parties to the uh, invitation to identify topics for the committee's work program uh, potential topics. So there were no further um, suggestions received uh, after the, uh, by the 4th of December from any of the other parties. So um, it was agreed that. An initial feasibility assessment would be carried out of the, the topics listed in Appendix A, um, and and uh, to inform the committee's consideration. But just just before we move over to that, it's just to really the members are clear on the difference uh, the different uh, responsibilities and remits of this committee as compared to the procedures committee chair, because some of the uh, <coughs> topics would appear to fall more properly to the procedures committee. So there's a few paragraphs there on page. Uh, 55, just reminding members of the, the respective remits of the two committees. Um, essentially, ARC, as an institutional review committee, would, would normally deal with more strategic and cross-cutting issues, whereas the procedures committee would, would be uh, responsible for looking at uh, um, uh, reviewing um, on an ongoing basis the, the specific standing orders and other procedures. <coughs> Bear that in mind. Um, and then there will be a number of st steps the committee will need to take if it, if it uh, uh, <coughs> there are topics here that it, w it would wish to take forward. So just moving to page 57, the Appendix A, um, 
these were the, the topics that were received from the various parties to date. Uh, just a summary of them, the full submissions follow the appendix. And uh, the feasibility considerations are in the right-hand column there. So see uh, NDNA, um, the suppose in terms of some of the, the areas have been addressed already, uh, topics two and three um, by the Procedures Committee and this committee uh, respectively are addressing those issues. Um, topics four and six, so the, the proposal that this committee would, would act as a, suppose a, would monitor progress against NDNA commitments. Um, that would potentially fall within the remit of the committee, okay, but it, it, so long as it was focused on monitoring the NDNA commitments which relate to the functioning of the assembly or the executive. Um, so if the committee was minded to pursue that topic, it would need to first you know, consider, it would need to uh, extract out all the commitments relate, that relate to the functioning of the assembly or the executive and the committee would need to consider the, further. Um, Moving on over to page 58, then uh, there were there were uh, proposals from the Green Party in relation to topics seven and eight. Um, topic seven. This is this is around the the strengthening of the scrutiny role of committees. Uh, I'm aware that this chairperson liaison group is taking that forward, and uh, specifically in relation to <coughs> the, the role of statutory committees in scrutinising statutory rules. Um, Topic eight, um, scrutiny committees and non-executive chairs. Um, if that was around the issue of the haunt and, and whether the haunt mechanism is appropriate for appointing chairs, that, that, that would fall within the remit of the, the committee. Okay, uh, the committee did undertake a review, as I mentioned there, in 2013. There's no consensus reached around uh, replacing the haunt. Um, Chair, c c Chair. C oh. can I be terribly rude? Just is, I, I have to chair a committee yes. meeting at two o'clock next yep. door, and if you're if Shane's going to run through all twenty of those, I'll not I'll not get to give my input into it. So, would there be a possibility if I could give my input, and then it's there, and yes. I could withdraw? Yes. Um, just that um, our suggestion or preference there would be the NDNA uh, commitments about the, what we discussed, because I think all five parties came together. And developed NDNA, each had their own contribution into that process, and I suppose there's no real official monitoring that's been done about the outworking of that. So, um, if this committee was able to to look at the relevant um, structural uh, suggestions that came out of the NDNA, it's something that all five parties actually, and, and I'm sure Jim would agree, but certainly the five parties agreed. Um, and signed up to that document, so there's something in it for everybody. And I think as you do continue down the suggestions, you do lower the number of parties that are supporting them. So it's just that it, it has the the broadest agreement in that document from the submissions, and it would there would be a little bit of something for everyone in the audience on it. But um, if I could be as rude as to leave that suggestion and then let Jane continue, and I'm happy to go with whatever. So again, no, appreciate. It. Thank you, Colin. No, we'll bear that in mind. Um, just on that point, just when, when Colin's still here, how does that set then with, for example, the TEO of, uh, committee in relation to NDA? Mm. So, 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 Chair, I suppose that the, the commitments in NDNA that relate to the Assembly... Uh, yeah, so we pull them, yeah. Uh, so that this committee would have remit in terms of the assembly and the executive a wider remit in that sense. Um, okay. Do you want to continue, Shane? Or okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just want? maybe by exception, Chair, I'll just go through the ones that were where it's, you know, there's not work ongoing Thanks, by another Tom. body and that would would seem appear to fall within the remit of the committee. Um, if, if if members are content, in terms of topic nine. The establishment of, of various subcommittees. There are procedures in place, and I've outlined those for the establishment of subcommittees. If if the proposal there was in, re, in terms of a strategic review of the committee, uh, the current arrangements of the, for the committee system, that would fall within the remit of the committee. However, as it highlighted there, there was a, such a review undertaken in 2013, and at that stage, it was considered the, the 
the chairperson at that stage of the CLT subgroup were, were largely content with the overall architecture at that stage. Um, can I can I just ask on that one? Uh, there is something that we do need to be aware of, and it's because we've moved. 2013, it was one type of government. Now we've got programme for government, and the committees are not matching into the um, targets, so the outcomes of that. So we're, we have a programme for government? Well, we've a draft one. Sure, Jim, I might have another one. You never know. But it's the way that the, the committees currently work is they're, they're siloed to one department as opposed to the outcomes. So there is a, there is a change. It, it just means then that a committee could invite... Um, someone from a different department to come and give evidence. But they don't, I don't think there's any requirement they have to come um, because it's outside that department. So I'm wondering, is there something there that's maybe just... Uh, well, they can, I think, but it, it, it's in relation to if there's a, an agreement from the committee to whom they depart, they're the sponsoring department. Yeah. Is that right, Shane? Yeah, and there's, there's provisions in Standing Order 64 for matters of joint concern to be, you know, committees to... Yeah. To work together, okay. but, but my point yeah, is, if it's, if it's a structural review, that got, it would fall within the remit yeah, of the would. committee chair. You know, overall. Yeah, I just think that our current committee structure and the scrutiny is not in keeping with if there was a formal program for government adopted, it causes difficulties. Then the the shadow the, the departments, but the outcomes don't. But you kind of, well, I don't know. But it, it, it goes into that area of how you define and how you operate cross cutting. Yeah. Because there's not one department that's not cross cutting exactly. on those know. issues. I know. You know. Uh, so you can end up in a situation where one committee's you're delving into a raft of things and you know yeah, five or six other committees like you know, and you never get anything done. Uh, Shane, maybe just to cut a Sorry to cut across you on this, but there has been a correspondence come in just before the committee from uh, a number of months later from the executive office. Now, I haven't seen it. She mentioned it just as we arrived in. So it'll be circulated to members. Uh, and I suppose what that means is there'll be, there may or may not be in that suggestions coming from, from the executive office. Oh, right. What might be useful if now the members have these 20, Shane has gone through, well, half of them. Um, we sort of know, you, you've taken the point that Colin has made in relation to number six uh, and the, ND, the NDNA. And is it possible that we could then narrow it down to, you know, two or three that at least then would give Shane uh, something to go away and scope out something for us and then out of that two or three we ultimately decide if we decide at all that we're given the time and all of that that we're actually going to do anything on this but if we are, we, we narrow it down to two or three where we make a decision is that a way forward? Have we, have we given them enough guidance? Well, that's I'm in your hands on, on that well, well, uh, I'm a bit Puzzled by this ex executive office, uh, can we have some indication of what's in that letter? Yeah, Chair, I'm just literally reading it as I, as, as I speak. Um, I just let the must have just come in before, whenever I arrive. Yeah. So there's an annex to the letter, and there's there's a, a list of bullet point suggestions, proposals for consideration by the ARC. Um, Examination of assembly questions, the effectiveness of the committee system, the process for dealing with executive papers, streamlining of the LM, LCM process, and it goes on. So there's a series of suggestions there. Well, I think that we need to take that with this and come back to this. Yes, and, and my, what yeah. might be helpful for on that is yeah. the same the, the same rationale be applied to it to what uh, what could okay. or could not be, you know, because there'll be stuff probably in that. It's not procedures. within the. It falls in within the procedures, or it falls somewhere else. And Shane, if that was yeah. if an appendix to that, to to update this yeah. was included yeah. and then sent out to members, then we can try and yep. come to a, a consensus. Okay, chair. Hello, chair. Are we saying that we can't touch anything that say falls within <coughs> procedures? Like I would have thought, if we have an overarching view of life 
within the assembly we should be able to do that. I suppose it is the assembly and executive review, we, so yeah. you know, so yeah. Like what, one of the issues, I'm not going to dwell on, but one of the issues that really irks me is the failure of the written question process, whereby questions can simply be ignored yeah. for months on end. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Chair, it's it's. I think if there's specific, to if it's whittled down to some topics, then mm -hmm. and there are there's clearly crossover. Then the committee could liaise with the procedures. I know the com com the procedures committee have a plan of a, a work program agreed. Mm -hmm. And you know it would be important that this committee doesn't clearly over over overlap with it. For that committee's uh, remit is to consider and review on an ongoing basis the, the standing orders and procedures of the assembly. So, um, as I said earlier, this committee's role is higher level. It's to but uh, in saying that, recommendations from this committee could have implications for standing orders. Um, so, but could I suggest that before our next meeting, Shane identifies if any of those topics are already being attended yes. to. By yeah, the procedures committee, can do that. Yep. Sure. Yeah. Okay, I, and I think and there was reference to some of the others uh, around issues such as, which may be relevant to what may maybe the outcome of uh, the piece of work that we've agreed to to do, and that is around uh, either the opposition yeah. or smaller parties around question time. Yeah. You know, yeah. and when they're when they're cold, you know. So you know, there there are some. But that again may come under more the remit of the procedures because it's currently in standing order. But as Jim says, there's no reason as to why we can't make a comment in relation to it. Mm -hmm. In fact, the work that we're doing with this re independent review yes, I, I, is going to maybe. <laughs> it does. It almost you really needed that first before we just started to do some of that. But that's. Are we happy enough that that's the way we'll, we'll do that? Yeah. And Shane, it would be helpful if we could. It's not strike off, you know, six, nine, whatever the numbers are, but at least we narrow down for 20, just narrow down to a smaller number, and then we can make a decision. Yeah. Okay? It's quite a lot of them. Thank you. Uh, appreciate that. Thanks for your help on that. And then uh, just really move to uh, correspondence. And there's 7.1 is a correspondence from the Finance Committee on the Report and Function of Government and Miscellaneous Provisions Bill, and that's for noting, and that's in Members' Packs. Uh, and then correspondence from Pivotal, uh, and that is at page 76, and again, that's just for members to note. Yeah. Any other business? Uh, date and time of the next meeting, Shane? I just is. notify members, and that's yep. green okay. here. Yep. Okay, have enough. Um, can I just wish you all a very happy Christmas and a peaceful and trust and better 2021. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Assembly, Committee Room 29.